Hello there. In this video, we will be understanding about mean free path and deriving a formula for it. So, let's say in a given gas volume, there are n number of gas molecules. So, what actually happens is, when this molecule moves, it interacts with the another molecule and this keeps on happening like this. So, a molecule doesn't just go in a straight line, it keeps on bombarding with the molecules next to each other. The distance that this particular gas molecule travels between these two successive collisions is what is called mean free path that is also denoted by lambda. So, we can say for this particular molecule, it keeps on interacting with the adjacent molecules and this would be let's say lambda 1, this would be lambda 2, this would be lambda 3, this would be lambda 4 and so on and so forth. If we take the average of all these distances, that is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 till lambda n divided by n, that is the average of all these distances, this is what is called mean free path. Now, this is the average distance a particle like a gas molecule travels between two successive collisions with other particles. Now, let's understand how do we derive an expression to find out the value of this lambda. Let's say we have this gas molecule and this green dot is basically representing the center of this gas molecule. We can also consider it as a center of mass of this gas molecule. And let's say the radius of this gas molecule is d by 2, the diameter is basically d. Let's say this gas molecule is going in a straight direction with a velocity v and it just passes these two gas molecules that is the gas molecule number 1 and 2, it just slides off them. So, we can say that this gas molecule going in this particular direction is just sliding off this. Now, let's say this gas molecule 1 and 2 are stationary. There obviously would be a lot many other molecules. Let's say this is another molecule, this is another molecule, this is another molecule, this is another molecule and so on and so forth. Now, during its course of motion, can we not say that the gas molecules that are lying within this boundary, within this boundary of this white line, these molecules are the one that this particular molecule, the one that I am highlighting with star, will be colliding with. Now, to be more specific, now since we know that for a given gas, all the molecules are same, so if this d by 2 was the radius of this gas molecule, so we can say that d by 2 would be the radius of this gas uh, molecule as well, so that this particular distance would be d. Now, we can define this particular cylinder type region, so we can say that all the molecules that would be lying within this cylinder would be the one that would be interacting with this particular molecule and thus colliding with it. Let's say for this particular molecule, now the separation from the star molecule is greater than d. So, let's say the separation is d dash. So, in this situation, d dash is greater than d, thus the collision would be avoided. But let's say for this particular situation, in this molecule, the separation, let's say d double dash, is obviously less than small d that you can see geometrically as so, in a nutshell, we can say that all the gas molecules that would be lying in this particular cylindrical region would be the ones that would be colliding with our star molecule. And please note that we have made a big assumption that all the other molecules are not moving. But that would not be the case in reality. So, we will assume that all the molecules are at rest apart from the one that is I am highlighting with the star. So, only this molecule is moving straight with the velocity v but the others are at rest. Finally, after deriving, we will also also add a component that will apply to all the cases even when the molecules are moving that is what happens in the real life. Now that we know that d is the radius of the cylinder, let's define some other terms. Let's say small n is the number of molecules per unit volume in this particular section and v is the velocity with which this gas molecule is moving. Let's say the gas molecules from here to here comes in the time delta t. So, we can say that this particular distance would be equal to the speed into time. So, we can say v into delta t. So, in order to find the total number of molecules in this particular section, we first need to find the volume of the cylinder. So, we can say that the volume of the cylinder would be equal to area multiplied by the height. So, the area of the cylinder is pi d square multiplied by the height would be equal to v times delta t. So, we can say that n is the number of molecules per unit volume. So, the total number of molecules in this section would be equal to small n times the volume that is pi d square into v delta t. Now, if the number of molecules are this much, so we can say this is the number of collisions that are happening. 
to if we define something called number of collisions per unit time so we can say that number of collisions per unit time that would be equal to n pi d square into v delta t divided by delta t so we can say that per unit time the number of collisions that are happening is n pi d square times v so we can write that n pi d square times v collisions are happening in one second so by simple unitary method we can say one collision would be happening in one by n pi d square times v seconds now this is the time that we have got for one collision but what we need to find we need to find the lambda that is the mean free path for one particular collision so this is the mean time that we have got but we need to find the mean free path so we can use the simple formula of speed is equal to distance by time from here we can find the value of distance that in this case would be equal to lambda that is the mean free path is equal to the speed multiplied by time since we know that the speed is v and the time that we have got for one collision is 1 divided by n pi d square times v so v and v gets cancelled so we are simply left with 1 by n pi d square in this formula n is the number of molecules per unit volume and d is the diameter of this particular molecule but now one major assumption that we made in this particular derivation is that we assume that all these other particles are sort of stationary but in reality the other particles will also be moving so we modify this formula for all the real life applications as 1 divided by root 2 times n pi d square so this is the formula to find the mean free path I hope you are now familiar with the definition of mean free path and how do we derive it. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.